Hey guys, it is Jeremy Krulikowski here, and I have another awesome show planned for you guys today. And what we are going to be talking about is why I am declaring war on passive Christianity, okay? Why am I declaring war on passive Christianity? What do I mean by that? What is passive Christianity? And guys, we're just going to dive right into this. And if I look a little bit red, yes, I'm frustrated at this, at this, at what's being taught out there, what's keeping so many Christians stuck financially. And I also went to the, I was outside for a lot this last weekend, soaking in some sun. So that being said, if that distracts you, let's just keep going forward. But I do want you guys to know, I thought it was funny because I am really frustrated about this and I am heated up about this because guys, here is the thing. Okay. If you are at a place where you just can't seem to get ahead financially, where your debt is just, it's at a stalemate, like it's not really going down. Maybe your debt is going up. Maybe you find that you can't really save. Like for whatever reason, you try your best. The moment you get saving, something comes up, knocks you off. And before you know it, you're right back down to zero. You're right back down to your thousand dollar emergency fund or whatever it would be. And you've been stuck in this cycle for years of grinding, of striving. And for whatever reason, you can't seem to get ahead. Well, guys, this is if that's you, okay, I have really good news, guys, because here is the real problem. The problem, one of the biggest problems is passive Christianity and what is being taught in the church. And guys, we're just going to dig into this because this is one of the top things keeping Christians stuck. And it's this idea that if I have financial problems, and guys, obviously, this, this also goes to your health, it goes, goes to other things, your relationships, stuff like that. But let's just talk specifically today about your financial well-being. It's, it's this idea of... Basically, if I just if, if I'm struggling, if I just pray or if I just tithe or if I just, you know, fast or if I just read the Bible or if I just ask for prayer or if I just, you know, claim a Bible verse that's probably out of context to make me feel good or, to, you know, get a blessing from a pastor, you know, a benediction or if I bind it up in Jesus name, whatever that 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 problem is going to go away. And guys, listen. None of those things are inherently bad, even even though the binding up in Jesus' name, I don't see anywhere in scripture where like binding up debt and financial problems, I've seen binding up demons, but that's another, that's beside the point. Everything else, there's nothing inherently bad with that stuff. That stuff is good stuff, but here's the problem, guys. None of those things involve you actually doing something to get on a plan and implementing it and fixing the problem by taking action, action, action action. It is passive Christianity. It's basically, let me do this spiritual thing without actually having to do something difficult that requires me to have to change my life and to change my actions. And guys, that is one of the biggest myths keeping people stuck. It was the biggest thing with COVID and things like that. Nobody was getting sermons around what kind of food you're putting into your bodies and what kind of exercise you're doing and what you're doing to you know stress out your body that could hurt your immune system. Nobody was preaching that. It was all from what I was hearing, have faith. God's going to provide, you know, trust the Lord, all of these sorts of things and get some prayer and lay hands and all that stuff is good, guys. I want to do that. I want to pray hands. And I, I believe that God is powerful and he can heal, but God also expects us to do our part. People, if you look all throughout scripture, you're going to see that yes, God's people prayed. Yes. God's people fasted. Yes. God's people claimed, you know, Bible verses and brought them and argued them before God. Yes. God's, you know, you know, we would, there's benedictions and blessings and all of those things are great, but it never stopped there. Like guys, in, in the the way that the Israelites beat the Canaanites out of the land of you know the land of Canaan, and the way that they were able to accomplish these amazing things, it's because they actually picked up their swords and they fought. It's because they actually picked up their shields. Now there were some moments where maybe God did some crazy miraculous thing, guys, but that's not what God's doing in your finances. Like God is not going. If you are struggling, or if you are behind, or if you're just check to check, or if you're, maybe you just can't seem to save, or maybe you're making tons of money and it's like, you're doing okay, but it's not the real security that you need to be getting to yourself in order to feel peace at night. When you sleep guys, God is not just going to send checks in the mail. Oh, well, sorry, I guess the stimulus doesn't count like that. Some of that was in your bank account, but guys, like you can't bank on that. You cannot bank on that. And even that, guys, it is only delaying the inevitable problem. It is only the delaying the inevitable. Guys, $1,000, $500, whatever that would be, is not going to fix your life. It's not going to change the problem. Like if you need that money, it's not because like the government not giving you that money is not the reason why you're in trouble. Okay. And guys, I get it. I, I'm not judging. Like I've been there. I get, I get those tax return. And it's like, yes, that like $500, that $5,000 back in tax return. Like I loved it. I appreciated it. Like guys, I appreciate it when I would get the government's help and things like that. 
or when a church member would send me some money or a family member would do these things. But guys, you cannot depend on all of these like outside forces to fix your problems. When if you really look at scripture, you're going to see that guys, real faith in God looks like, yeah, we'll pray. I'll read Bible verses. I'll look at it. But ultimately you're going to see that all throughout scripture, real faith in God means taking God at his word, doing something that represents you believe it. In other words, if you believe that the Bible says that the plans of the diligent, like those who do are diligent, diligent, those who plan, those who save, those people are going to prosper financially, those who have integrity, all those sorts of things. Then if you really believe that you're going to be doing something to position yourself to get those blessings. In other words, you're going to be saving because it says you believe the promise. If it, you're going to be diligent to implement a plan because you believe the promise, you're going to be getting wise counsel because you believe the promise. You're going to be making a plan because you believe the promise. Scripture gives us a formula, guys, and it is amazing. God has given you a formula for debt freedom, for, for building real wealth, for getting financially free, for being able to give and help and serve tons of people. And guys, the way that you implement that is by trusting, first of all, yes, believing the promises, but guys, real faith looks like belief. If you look in scripture, belief and faith is, is when you're taking action on a concept that shows you actually believe it. So in other words, if I believe that there is water in this cup and I am in a desert and I am drowning, if I'm not drinking the water, I probably don't believe that there's something in here that's actually going to save me. So if you really believe that God is powerful, if you believe that God has given us resources in scripture, that he's given wise counsel, that he's given ways for you to get out of this situation and you're not taking action to do it, do you really believe? Do you really believe? Or is it just the same stuff that the demons believe where it's not real? Like it's not your, your life isn't showing it. So if you really believe that one day we're all going to have to stand before God and give an account for our lives, does the way that you're spending money, does the amount of debt that you're carrying right now, does the lack of savings that you have to provide for your family, which by the way, Paul says, those who do not provide for their relatives have denied the faith. They are worse than an unbeliever. If you really believe that, is the way that you're handling your money right now showing it? Is it showing it? And if not, guys, you don't really believe. You don't. You don't believe those promises, but we sure as crap are going to believe all the promises, quote unquote promises, which are actually Bible verses taken out of context about God providing and him giving some miracles and trust God and Matthew, you know, you know, God feeds the ravens and he feeds the flowers. Seek first, seek all of that stuff. Seek first the kingdom. I love it. Seek first the kingdom is right. I love it. But guys, if you notice it, guys, yes, God provides for the birds. But how many of you guys, if you look out your window right now, are birds just sitting there? And there's just worms being delivered by angels and plopping them in their mouths. How many of you guys see out there flowers that are just drooped over or are they lifted? Are they moving with the sun? Are they doing, are they getting photo, using photosynthesis? Are they pulling nutrients out of the ground? Flowers, plants are even at work. Hey, Nina, how are you doing? Flowers are at work. Birds are at work. Guys, try like they're, they're using God's given resources to get an outcome. Trust, like seeking first the kingdom of God and all of these things like trusting in God. It does not mean that you're trusting God to bail you out, that you're trusting God to do the work for you. It means that you are trusting he has given you provision. He has given you opportunity that he is going to bless you when you are seeking to do the work and honor him and are living and putting him first and foremost. But guys, you have to ask, like, if you're not, if you're, if you're not honoring this whole giant, it's all over scripture, guys, these places in scripture, which talk about how we're called to give to the needy. Like if save all, but let's just talk about giving guys, giving is all over the Bible. But if your financial position is making it so that you're not able to like actually give and serve and bless, or even then, if it's just like this much, when you could be doing this much because of your financial management, guys, do you really believe and are you really trusting those promises that like it's more blessed to give than to receive? If you believe that, why are you not seeking more financial freedom? Why are you not seeking to get the banks out of your life? So instead of handing thousands of dollars over to Visa, MasterCard, Sally Mae, and the credit card companies and your car companies, why are you not seeking to do that and, and take that money and put it into helping the poor and the needy and the weak and your church and the people and your family, those that are in need? If you really believe 
believe all of those promises, then why are you still not doing anything to fix the problem? And that is, guys, what I'm saying. And guys, please hear my heart on this. I am not judging you in the sense that like, I am not speaking down on you because I've been there. I was that guy who was literally like, what was your plan for an emergency? The church will take care of it at some point. Maybe the family will take care of it at some point. Maybe the government's going to take care of it at some point. Guys, I was I was doing nothing to secure my own financial future and it was putting my family in jeopardy and it was dumb. It was stupid. It was lazy. It was not biblical. And the moment I finally realized that, and guys, I was at Bible college. I went to Bible college for six years and studied under some of the best, the top theological you know, gurus and all this stuff. And it's like, and I was still totally lost when it came to this area of my life. And I felt so spiritual condemning all the rich people and condemning the people that had a savings and storing up treasures on earth and all this kind of crap. And again, I was taking Bible verses out of context to make me feel justified, make me feel good about my own poverty or my lack of financial stewardship. And the moment I finally got the wake up call, that's when everything started to begin, like began. That's when I realized, and guys, not just that, talking to Christians, hundreds of Christians a year all over this country that quote all of those same Bible verses and promises. And I know God's going to provide and he's doing that. But guys, like they're struggling. I'm talking to some people, guys, they're, they're literally in the process of losing their home, losing their car. You know, some of them are on the verge of being homeless. I've talked to some people where they're losing their jobs. The debt is going up because they're having to live off of credit cards. I've talked to people that are, their marriages are on the line. I've talked to people where their health is falling apart because of the stress that their body's going. They can't sleep. They're coping and they're drinking or they're eating crap, you know, crappy food or they're, you know, doing whatever. They're not exercising because they're so depressed and defeated and stressed out. And all of these things are happening. And then ultimately all of that's falling apart. But, oh, but God's going to provide. God's going to show me a way out. Guys, listen, either God is lying and God is not really keeping his promise to provide for you because I don't know about like when we say God's providing for me, guys, d- does being in like tens of thousands of dollars of debt and hundreds of dollars of debt count as like God providing? Or is it just the fact that you still have food on your table? I really believe that God will provide for you when you commit to participating in the process. When you commit to taking his word and acknowledging that you are in his image, he has given you the resources, the abilities, the, the, the ability to be able to actually do something and to change your life and to transform your destiny with his help. He sustains you, that you believe that he has given you oxygen and, and blood and creativity and brain cells and all of these things to do amazing things right now. That if you're a Christian, he's given you the Holy Spirit. And he's given you the power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. He's given you all of the resources you need. And yes, we should still pray. We should still ask for help. But guys, he is already with you. You just need to accept that wisdom and take advantage of it and do something and get some help and talk to wise counselors, talk to people that know what the heck they're doing and do what you're doing in all of these other areas of your life, like seeking an attorney and getting to a dentist and going to a doctor. Talk to a financial expert, (laughs) somebody that is actually living it, that they're teaching it, that they've helped countless people fix your problem. If that's you guys, book a call. You know that we can help you guys if you've been hanging out for any length of time. But guys, the point is, is this, is that passive Christianity is going to keep you in debt. It is going to keep you in struggle. It is going to keep you guys. And here's the thing. We are at a place, guys, where it feels like we can quote these Bible verses out of context to make us feel good. And even Karl Karl Marx said this, and I hated this quote back in the day because I thought it was such an insult to Christianity. And then I realized that this is actually true for a lot of Christians. And it was this idea that the religion is the opium of the masses or of the people. And really, guys, and I I think this is what he means. If not, if the point is, is that like so many people are taking Bible promises, like I said, of fear not, I am with you. And all this stuff that I just taught, God's not given us a spirit of fear and all these sorts of things, but they're out of context. And we take those verses to medicate ourselves spiritually and to feel good about our lack of taking action and find some kind of false hope or promise. And the only reason, guys, why people in this country are still able to claim those verses out of context to to make themselves feel good is because stuff hasn't hit the fan yet. But I can promise you right now that Christians that are going through bankruptcy, that have lost their marriages, that have they've lost a spouse to, to some kind of heart attack or stroke or some stress, financial stress-related disease, 
people that have lost their, you know, their cars are going, all the, those people get it. And even some of those people still aren't getting it and they're still struggling. But so many people, guys, especially Christians around the world, where they realize if I do not go outside of my door right now and plant these beans and water these beans, my child is going to die. If I do not go to this doctor and get this medicine, my child is going to die. I am going to die. There, we are in a, shel a society that is sheltering us with bailouts and free stuff and handouts and all of these things, even some people in the church that's making us think that it's still okay, that we're surviving. So therefore God is providing and he's doing enough and he's doing, he's holding up his end of the bargain. Well, yeah, he's holding up his end of the bargain in the sense that he's being really freaking gracious to us and he's being really kind, but he doesn't have to. And I can tell you and assure you right now, if you look across the entire world, there are Christians right now that are not experiencing that same provision and things like that. And they are dying because they need help. They are dying because they don't have resources. They are dying because they don't have enough people with actual opportunity, like the people in America, like Christians here in this country, in the West, to support them because so many people in the West are struggling financially that we can do nothing to help them. And some of them are dying. And a lot of them are dying because they're not doing anything either, but they realize that. And they, if they give up, they realize it's be, it, the reason why I'm dying is because I'm not doing something to fix the problem. And it's no different in this country, guys. We are reaching a point in this country where, guys, mark my words, some, so, at some point, something is going to happen that is going to wake everybody up. I honestly believe that COVID and all this stuff, it is the calm before the storm. There is so much stuff that, like, it just doesn't make any sense. I'm like, thousands of dollars, checks being written, you know, pausing student loans for one, over a trillion dollars in debt. Where's all this money? Like, how are, how are, where is this end, guys? It does not end well. It does not end well for us, for our kids. I, I don't know, guys, but all I can say is what if the government cannot give you social insecurity? What if they can't give you Medicare or Medicaid? Or what if they're going to give you some of these benefits in exchange for, hey, do what we say, do this sort of thing, whatever, surrender your rights. And guys, hopefully you realize that if you study history, this is what happens in a lot of other places when people are not prepared, they're not financially stable, and they have to depend on this on this lord this overlord this person this you know this government this system to be able to bail them out and provide for them and guys that's what people do people are already doing it we're already so many people are giving themselves over and it's like whatever you say fine if you'll give us this we'll we'll surrender this and we'll compromise this and guys all i can say is that passive Christianity and these sorts of things guys everything i'm talking about right now it is going to destroy the church but what is if that's what's going to destroy the church financially? What is going to heal the church financially? And guys, it is this. Like I've already said, it is taking action. It is real. It is waking up today. And if you're watching this, that I consider this God's wake up call for you. OK, and it is saying, I don't have to live like this anymore. I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't need to keep struggling no matter how much money you make, whether you're making a few thousand dollars a month or tens of thousands of dollars a month. I don't have to be living in this fear and this anxiety and this stress that God has given me away and that he has given me counselors. He has given me opportunities. He has given me resources. He has given me accountability, support, everything that I need in order to be able to get help. I just need to take action, implement it. And for some of you guys that already feel like you've got everything you need to fix it, and for some reason, it's like you just need to make one tweak, then go make that tweak. But what I can assure you this, guys, is the people that are watching this right now, if you are watching this, there is a really freaking good chance that you have tried the church programs. You've read the financial books. You've watched the YouTube videos. You've had the conversations with people at church or your in-laws or whoever you're about, or your friends about money. You've gotten all this advice, but for whatever reason, it's not working for you or it's not enough and you're stuck and you've tried all of the traditional stuff and it's not working. You've read the Bible verses. You've taken the courses you've done and all those things are good. All those things are great. But guys, just like it wouldn't be enough if you were to watch a book on how to fill up, you know, put a, the proper crown on your tooth and talk to some friends who got a crown and ask them what did they do to get the crown off, you know, to get the crown on and, and you know, reading a book about dentistry. You know, guys, just like you wouldn't rely on that to fix something as problematic as a tooth, guys, you cannot rely on all of that other free, cheap wisdom, you know, everything online and information, general information in order to fix your debt problem, in order to fix your lack of savings in order to fix the, the this tension and the stress that's putting on your relationships in order to, do you guys get it? Like if, if a tooth is that important, how much more important is your financial security? Literally the one thing that could keep you from life or death, 
life or death or losing everything in your life if you don't fix it. If you lose a job, if you lose your house or if you lose your health, if you lose a spouse, if somebody dies, if you get a divorce, if something happens and now you're left vulnerable and exposed to what, you know, the consequences of your situation, like Warren Buffett, you know, that like whenever, you know, everyone, you can tell someone skinny dipping when the tide goes out. If you feel like right now, like I'm skinny dipping, I'm being reckless, I'm being foolish. I even talked to a person recently who was like, on some level, I feel like I'm invincible. Guys, listen, if you're making crappy decisions financially and it is showing in your financial life or you're just not taking enough action, you're not taking the right action or you've tried to do a lot of the right things and you're doing everything you can, but it's just not working, guys, reach out and book a call. Go to jeremykrulikowski.com forward slash apply. I just dropped a link here and guys, go in there, book a call and let's figure out what is it that's really holding you back? And I can tell you guys right now, the reason why I love this Facebook Live and this gift to you is because this this in and of itself might be enough to just wake you up and at least start getting the ball moving. And again, for most of you guys, the ball moving needs to be, you need to book a call, you need to get some expertise in your life, you need to talk to somebody who can actually fix it, okay? But not just that, guys. I just know that if you will realize, like there's not one Bible verse in the entire Bible that says, if you don't take action, if you sit back, relax, let go and let God, guys, don't even get me started. How many times are we going to quote this? I get to verse in the Bible. Where in the Bible does it say, let go and let God just basically surrender it all. Do nothing. Sit back, sit in your chair and just watch God work wonders and miracles and everything in your life. And guys, that's the problem. Again, it's, it's just conditioned in every area of society, specifically within the church. It is you're, you're in worship services and we're praying all these prayers for blessings and God to provide and cl claiming all of these promises and all of this stuff. But guys, like how many songs are about, we need to take action. We need to honor God with our choices. We need to make honor God, honor our bodies and be wise with what we're doing and not just expecting all these miracles for healing. If we're making, if we're eating crappy food and if we're not exercising, same thing with our finances. If you're not on a plan, if you're not working it financially, if you're not getting real help, if you're not talking to people that can actually fix the problem versus just people with the good opinions, like a brother-in-law or sister-in-law, whatever, like that, it's just going to fix it guys. Like there's, there's not one Bible verse that says again, if we just sit back and do nothing that God's going to fix it for us. And guys, we have to take action. And that's why, again, I'm declaring war on passive Christianity because I'm here to wake you up to serve the church because, guys, when we fix this, everything changes across the entire world. When Christians wake up, when Christians in the West realize that we are being fed a massive lie, that I literally just watched a sermon the other day, or just today of a guy just, and I commit, you know, and I, I bind this up and, you know, sort of thing. And I bind up this debt and I, and I speak blessing and I, and I'm, I am, you know, prophesying blessing and that you're going to do it. Guys, that's all great. But, but where in that sermon or where in that process, if he's like, I'm going to bless you and here's what, and God's going to speak favor and all that stuff is great. But those people, how many of them left and actually changed the desires of, or the, the course of their life? How many people, if they, if they were like, I pray for healing over these people and people leave that congregation and people go that, how many of them left the congregation and papped, you know, you know, just pounded a bunch of processed foods and fast foods and things that were crappy, expecting and just waiting for God to just deliver some kind of divine passive miracle. How many people left the church and I speak financial blessing and God's provision over you. And I'm just, I, I'm speaking prophecy that there's, you know, anxiety, people that are anxious should not be anxious about their finances. And that's great. And that's awesome. But then they leave the service. And how many of those people got that promise, got that false assurance, but they're still sitting there and they're looking at the money coming in and they have no plan for it. They have no plan for the debt. They're getting behind on payments or their, their money is going in default or they're not making they're not making the payments or whatever the heck it might be. Or they're not really sitting down and being honest and talking about it and coming up with a spouse. They're not working with anybody. They're not getting any accountability. They're not getting any support. They're not actually doing something to not only plan for how to fix the finances, but actually doing something to get the money under control, to get more money coming in. They're not applying. They're not getting the promotions. They're not getting the raises. They're not growing their business. They're not doing anything to transform the income side to be able to wipe out the debt or get financial freedom or give more guys. How many Christians listened to that sermon or got that benediction or whatever, and they didn't do any of that. And that is what's going on in the church, guys. That is what is keeping Christians stuck. It is not enough to just get a blessing, to get a prayer, to get some Bible verse quoted out of context, to make you feel good about your situation or whatever it is, which you're going to see all over Facebook, 
all of the memes, all the gifts. And guys, to be honest, some of the people that I see struggling the most are the ones who, when you go on their Facebook or their Instagram, there's the ones that's like faith, faith over fear and trust God and all this stuff. And guys, but again, if, if you are not doing anything to change your life, you should be afraid. It is a gift. I literally talk to people. I try not to, I try not to listen to the fear and I try to just trust God and I try to just, you know, everything's going to be okay and God's going to provide for me. And I just know that he's my provider and that he says, you know, all good things, you know, but the, you know, he predestined us for all this and all whatever. And you quote all these verses and all these things. And I'm just telling myself, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Guys, if you look throughout scripture again, there is nothing wrong with being anxious and afraid when we are not living in accordance to God's will. When it comes to an area of our life, when, when we're not living in accordance to our finances, just like if you right now, if you went out and you were having an affair with, you know, on somebody else and it's like, and then you were, it was Sunday morning or it was Monday morning and you woke up and you felt this immense amount of fear. And it's like, oh, what if they find out? What if, what if, you know, what if this cost me my job or what if my kids leave me and hate me and, oh, don't be afraid. You know, God's going to, you know, guys, it is no different. It is disobedience. And when we don't have a real plan and we're living in debt and financial stress or a lack of savings that's putting our family in jeopardy where we can't provide, we can't really give, we can't really serve the world, guys. That is disobedience. It is keeping us in struggle. And guys, I was the biggest overlooker of that for years. I felt so good about myself because I was broke. I felt so righteous because I didn't have a ton of money and I wasn't being consumed by the world and the things of this world and all this crap that was keeping me stuck I was actually a form of pride and self-righteousness. And it was something that, again, was keeping me from actually having real financial wealth and having real financial freedom in my life. And I had to start with getting all of this junk out of my head that I was being force fed by all of these sermons and these Christian books and these things like that, guys, that were making me basically feel content and happy and okay with where I was at without doing something to actually fix my life. Guys, I needed help. I was at a place where I had tens of thousands of dollars. I think at the time when we actually started getting debt, I think we still had $15,000 in debt. I had no real plan. I was, I was, I was making just enough money to be able to make the payments and to be able to pay the bills, but my debt wasn't really going down. I would get money every once in a while from the government or something like that when I would get some kind of perk at tax return, whatever. But then I would take that and I would blow the money. I would barely put it toward the debt. Guys, I was irresponsible. I was buying crap that I didn't need. I was not living within my means. I was all of this stuff. And then I was feeling this sense of security based off of a couple Bible verses out of context about God's just going to provide. He's going to cover me and he's going to whatever. And guys, I know that in heaven, God was disgusted with my behavior because I was, it was really a form of laziness. It was a form of selfishness. It was a form of, you know, really all of these different things it, that were keeping me stuck pride. It was a form of all of this sort of stuff that was keeping me in financial bondage and keeping me from having real wealth. Meanwhile, my family needed help. My wife needed certain medical things. I wanted to be able to adopt children. I wanted to be able to buy a house. I wanted to be able to give more. And I was having to constantly turn people away that wanted help because I didn't have any money. And, and it sucked. And I deep down, I just felt shame, but honestly, deep down, I just felt lost. And again, this is where, again, God, God tells us to admonish the idol and like be patient with the weak and all these sorts of guys. If you are just, if you are feeling like Jeremy, okay, I hear it. I get the fire. I get the passion. I get it. And I'm right there with you. And I definitely have some stuff to own, but honestly, Jeremy, I want what you're saying. I just literally feel hopeless or I feel helpless. I don't know what to do. Guys, that is also why I'm speaking to you because deep down while there was some laziness there and deep down guys underneath all of it, underneath all of it and a lack of commitment or discipline or self-control underneath it was just a, a huge amount of helplessness and hopelessness. I didn't know where to turn. I didn't know who to believe. I didn't know where to begin, where to start. And I wanted financial freedom. Of course, guys, who doesn't want, you know, 30, 40, $50,000 in your savings? Who doesn't want to be prepared for retirement and getting on track to do that? Who doesn't want to be out of debt? Who doesn't want to go on more vacations? Who doesn't want to help out more causes? And like every time someone comes to your church and, you know, or a missionary, a friend goes into missions, or if there's some, you know, some cause something that touches your heart, how many of us don't want to be able to give? Deep down, we all want that. 
But the problem is that, again, I felt helpless and hopeless to know how to fix it. I grew up poor. I grew up broke. I grew up not having anyone show me how to handle my money, how to grow my wealth, how to expand my income significantly. None of that stuff. How to get on the same page with my spouse around money. None of that stuff. Nobody taught me that. They didn't teach us that in schools. The government did a really crappy job at that one. You know, our parents didn't teach us this stuff because their parents didn't teach it and their parents and they did their best, but that's all they had. And all of these sorts of things, guys, and deep down, I just didn't know where to turn until I did, until I found somebody who would take my hand and show me how to actually fix the problem, how to really transform my finances to you know, expand my income and to get out of debt and to get on a plan to get financially free and to be able to give more and serve more and have more freedom and take care of my family and do the things that we wanted to do, whether that was getting my wife's mercury fillings taken out of her mouth or being able to get, you know, bless my in-laws with some things and help them achieve their dreams or being able to buy a car that we needed to upgrade our size of our car because our family was getting bigger or adopt a child or buy a house or whatever it would be or give, you know, and to give to these new causes and give more to our church and support the people in need. All that sort of stuff happened, guys, because I actually got help. I read books. I watched YouTube videos. I listened to podcasts. All that stuff was so great and it was so helpful and it wasn't enough. And I probably listened to a thousand hours of personal development and stuff still stuck until I finally made the call and I sat down with somebody who clearly knew more than me, clearly had results and could actually help me fix the problem. And that's when I started to transform my life, my financial situation, and then start helping other people do the same because I invested in world-class support. And now guys, we have spent the money, we've spent the time, the thousand, I can't even tell you how many hours of coaching and studying and resources and things I'm taking in to be able to figure out why are so many people stuck? Why are they going through all these church programs and reading these books and going through all this stuff? And some of the smartest people, hardworking people on this planet, even some people making extremely good money, even if they're making no money. I'm just saying, no, no, it doesn't matter. The point being, it's like, why are there so many good, hardworking, God-fearing, God-loving people that are really intelligent, struggling financially? I'm even talking to financial, you know, people that are in the accounting space, people that are finan like the, 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 the stewardship people at their church and the financial people and the guys account. I mean, all of these sorts of things. Why is it that you can be so good with the business or so good with helping other people and, you know, in the church and whatever it is and their, their finances and yet your own personal sucks and it's, and it's, and it's not working. Why is it? And that's guys, we spent the time. We've spent the expertise. And that's, this is my, this is what we do all day, every single day is help Christians like you to fix the problems in your finances that you are facing today. Today. So if you want that, go to jeremykulikowski.com forward slash apply again. Let's book a free call, guys. We will serve you. We will help you guys. We'll figure out what's wrong and what we need to do to fix it and get you on a on, on, on a plan that works, guys. Our plan works. When you show up and you are coachable, you're resourceful, you are committed, it will work and you guys will crush your debt faster than you ever thought possible. You will save more than you ever thought you possibly could. And if you're married, again, you are going to have a blast. You are going to have fun. You're going to feel more connection and excitement and passion because finances, guys, oh man, they will unite you. They will get you so fired up about life and, and what's possible because it expresses all of your desires and your goals. And guys, when you had that unity and there's no more tension. There's no more conflict. There's no more judgment between the two of you or guilt between the two of you. And oh my gosh, guys, the intimacy level is unreal. Guys, all of those things happen when you actually get help. And again, this is what we do all day, every day, guys, just let us help. Now I can't, I'm not promising I can help you because I don't know your situation. I don't know if you're coachable. I don't know if you're resourceful. I don't know if you're decisive and if you're committed to really changing your life. If you're not, do not book this call, but I'm telling, but don't worry guys. Again, those of you who felt helpless and just feel like you're a piece of crap and feel like there's nothing right with you and you can't figure this out. Guys, I'm talking about from this day going forward. I'm talking about from, from the time you go and book this call, are you committed? Will you be resourceful? Or will you be the type of person that is coachable? Even if we made an offer to work with you, I don't know if we will yet. I just need to know, can we help you? And we'll talk about that on the call and figure out what's the best solution for you. Because guys, we're not the best fit for everybody. And not everyone's ready for that. I literally talked to someone the other day who is like, listen, I just, I clearly, I'm just not committed enough to want to fix my life. I just still think I'm kind of goofing off and I'm just not serious. And it's like, and it was, it was awful because he's got a wife, he's got kids that desperately need him to step up and he's still not doing it. And it's one of those things that guys, it is like, I can't help people that are not sick and tired of being sick and tired. But guys, if you're anything like me, when I booked a call like that, the first call, I was just like, I don't know what I need to do. 
show me what to do. I was fix it. I let down my walls. I was open because guys, I just need help guys. When you are in the, I, when you are in the ER and you're in the ICU and you're bleeding out of your neck, guys, it's like, you just, you trust the person you show up and like, just show me what I need to do to fix it. Clearly you're the expert guys. And we are, I don't have time to argue with people. I don't have time to try to like, you know, for people to like, try to have to pull out all the information. You got to be open. You got to be vulnerable. Just share it. Just be honest with yourself. Be honest with me. And like, let's talk about it. Let's figure out what we need to do to fix it and how we can help. So guys, that's the link to go do it. Um, we're, this is why we're declaring war and the war is not over. The war has just begun. And guys, we're raising up an army of people, of Christians that are going to get financially free, that are going to change the world with their finances, starting at home, because guys, it's only then that we're going to be able to alleviate so much of the suffering that we see around this world and on this earth and forever and eternity. And that's why I do what I do. And that's why our clients do what we do. And that's why we're fired up in jazz. And we're here to serve you guys and get you to that level and that ability to make the impact that you're called to make by God. We were saved for good works, not just good feelings and spiritual stuff. We're talking about taking action. And one of the most important actions you can take, the good works you can do, is working out a financial plan to get yourself financially free so you can make the impact that God is calling you to make in this world, in this 3D world that needs money, that needs resources. All your favorite nonprofits, your churches, all those things, they need money. They need prayers, but they need money. And that's how we're going to be able to you know, get people food, clothing, Bibles, everything that we need to change the world, guys. It's only going to happen when we declare war on passive Christianity and we take ownership of our God-given ability to be able to fix it with our actions, taking the hands of experts, taking the hands of people that are going to support us and show us the way there. So love you guys. Have an amazing uh, time. Thanks for hanging out here. Again, guys, share this with people that need to. And again, go ahead and go to jeremykrulikowski.com forward slash apply and book your free call. And let's see if we can help you guys fix this because I desperately want, if you are a Christian who loves Jesus and you got a big heart for the kingdom of God, Let's talk and see what we can do to get you there and have a bigger impact in this world. So God bless. Have an awesome day. And we'll see you guys on the next show. Talk to you soon. Bye.